Welcome to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care, where your host, writer, actor, and producer Candy Washington helps you live a more joyful life with a cheeky dash of pop culture news. Be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and join the conversation on Instagram at Candy Washington. Let's go. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington, and I am so grateful for this time that I have with you. So if you are watching this on one of our podcast platforms, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. And if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share with a friend because your journey to self-love and self-worth is always a little bit easier and a little bit more joyful with a little bit of support. So with that, let's dive into today's episode, which is five ways to deal with burnout. Yes, burnout. I think we've all have been there. I know I have been, just to be 100% transparent and authentic. I have been burned out before. Again, I do a lot of content creation, a lot of creativity, and there have been times where I just feel... And, and this is what we can also talk about because burnout is different from being tired or exhausted. They're, they're two different things. So if you're just tired or exhausted, usually you can just, you know, go to bed, eat a little bit healthier, sleep a little bit more, you know, things like that. Take a little mini break and you're fine, right? Um, that's just being tired or exhausted. That's more like a f- physical type thing where it's like a quick fix, you know. Being burned out, it's more of a mental, spiritual, and emotional exhaustion. And that's when you feel uninspired, you feel lethargic, you kind of feel almost like in a fog, you just don't have the energy you used to have, you don't feel motivated, you kind of lose your passion. That's more of what burnout is. Burnout is more of that mental, spiritual, um, emotional exhaustion that of course also manifest physically. You know, you might sleep more, you know, stay up later or go to bed super early, sleep in or can't sleep, you know, some insomnia, but then oversleeping, like things like that. But it's really more of a of a chronicness and it's more of a general feeling of feeling uninspired and passionless rather than situational, rather than, oh, I had a really long weekend or a really tough week and I just need to like sleep or take a day off or whatever, and you're back in business, right? That's different. That's more of just like a general situational thing. But true burnout is when you have this sort of overall feeling of just being disengaged, just not really feeling there and not really feeling motivated. It's like this lack of motivation. And I have definitely been there. You know, I do podcasts and writing and videos and social media and acting and hosting and all of the other things. So I have so many things going on that I think sometimes it's really easy to feel spread too thin and you get exhausted, you get uninspired. So I have definitely have felt burned out. And I will go through my top five ways to deal with burnout. And a lot of these things I have done myself. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So I think the first way to deal with burnout is to stop and take a break. Like stop, (laughs) like literally stop. So when you feel yourself having those symptoms where it's like this true overall feeling and it's chronic, right? It's it's long-term. It's not just situational of feeling uninspired. You're not motivated. You don't really have that passion. You don't have your energy. You don't have that fire anymore. Stop, right? Stop. Stop and take a break, whether it's taking a vacation from work, whether it's taking space from a partner, whether it's just doing less or doing nothing. Stop. Give yourself the time and the space to just be. So that's the first one. And that ties into the second one which is identify the source of your burnout. So the first way is you stop, right? You stop, you 
you stop what you're doing because whatever you're doing isn't working and you're and you're taking a break. Within that stopping, within that stillness, I want you to do number two, which is identify the source of your burnout. Are you burned out in your life in general where you just kind of feel like I don't have a direction? What am I doing? I'm just burned out. I just, all of this stuff. Are you burned out at work? Is it career focused? You just feel you don't really love what you're doing. You're not being fulfilled. Are you burned out in your friendships? Are you burned out in your um, relationship? Like you want to identify the source of your burnout. But I will tell you this. Usually when you're burned out, how you feel, it usually bleeds into every aspect of your life. So when you feel burned out, it probably shows up with your relationship to your friends and family. It shows up in your romantic relationships. It shows up at work. It shows up in your relationship to yourself. You probably not stop taking as good care of yourself when you're burned out. You don't take care of your hygiene as much or your wardrobe as much or just, you know, working out or your lifestyle or your diet. Like when you're burned out, you usually stop taking care of yourself too. So it also bleeds into the relationship that you have with yourself. But if you can identify a specific source, because usually if you're burned out at work, that will cause you to be burned out and then it bleeds into the other aspects. But the work aspect is the number one source. Maybe you're burned out in your relationship. That's the number one source. And then you show up differently at your job and with your friends and family. So I identify what that initial source of your burnout is, even though I'm pretty sure it's bleeding into the other aspects of your life, but identify that source because that's the one we're going to really want to focus on. So number one, stop and take a break. Number two, use that time and stillness to identify the main source. And then number three is to reconnect with yourself and to others for support. So now that you've identified the source, I want you to reconnect to yourself. Usually when you feel burnt out, you feel disconnected from who you are, your intuition, your inspiration, your passion, your purpose. You usually feel disconnected. So I want you to reconnect with yourself. Start meditating. Start journaling. Start taking intentional t- breaks to do nothing but anything, to, but to do nothing, right? You don't have to focus on being productive. You don't have to focus on being effective. You can just focus on whatever brings you joy and peace in that moment. You know, reach out for support, get a therapist, get a counselor, spiritual advisor, whatever, reach out for support, but reconnect to yourself. Pray if that's what you're, if if that's what you're into, do something creative and artsy, but do it for yourself. You're not doing it again because a lot of times creatives get burnt out because you, you always have to be producing and churning out stuff, but do something creative that's just for yourself, draw, paint, but it's just for you. You're just reconnecting with who you are. Start to, to date yourself, take yourself out, do things for yourself, you know, get your hair done, get your nails done, buy some new clothes, go to a spa. And again, it's not about being like flashy and spending money, but it's about taking the intentional time to take care of yourself. Take that time to reconnect with yourself. Take that time to reevaluate. Well, what is it that makes me happy? What is it that I actually want? What actually brings me joy? Who am I authentically? Take that time to reconnect to yourself. And then also take that time to reconnect to others in a healthy and supportive way. So a lot of times when we feel burnt out, it's because we feel that we can't ask for help, that we can't reach out to people, that we don't have a support system, that we can't, you know, um, that we sort of have to do it all on our own and you don't have to do it all on your own. So reconnect to yourself and reconnect with others. Reach out to friends for support. Reach out to a therapist for support. Reach out to your community for support. Do fun things again. You know, just go out with your friends, have a girls night or a boys day or boy and girl day, whatever it is. Take the time to have fun again. Reconnect with yourself again. The fourth, reestablish healthy boundaries in your life. 
because usually when we are burned out, it's because we feel that we are stretched too thin. We're doing a thousand things. We're saying yes to everything. We're not asking for help. And that usually means we have very unclear or murky boundaries. So reestablish your boundaries. Yes, I can do this. No, I can't do that. At work, I'm available between 9 and 6. Sorry, I can't do overtime. Sorry, I can't work on the weekends. In your relationships, hey, I've been doing X, Y, and Z for us. I'm going to need a little bit of help doing A, B, C with us. I can do this, but I can't do that. You know, wherever it is, ask for help and reestablish boundaries. Don't continue to overextend yourself. Learn how to say no. Learn how to manage other people's expectations of you. Manage what how people think of you and the sense of what they can expect you to do and not to do. So that way you're not overgiving and depleting yourself and overextending yourself and spreading yourself too thin. You need boundaries. Hey, don't call me before this time. I don't work on Thursdays. What you know, whatever it is. If yourself, if even if you work for yourself, you know, usually that's the biggest thing. Create your own healthy boundaries if you work for yourself. Set your own office hours. Take the time to go out to lunch. Take the time to go work out. Take your nights off or take your mornings or your weekends, whatever it is. Go on vacations. Create boundaries because you want to have a balance in your life. You want to have, sure, what you do for work. And then you also want to have what you do for yourself. You know, if a friend is calling you all day long and you can't even focus on what you need to do, create that boundary. Turn the phone off. Mute that person for now. Don't respond, whatever it is. Create your own boundaries for yourself so you don't pour your cup out and then you have nothing back to to, um, give to yourself. So reestablish boundaries in your life in order to protect and preserve your own energy and to fill your own cup up first. And the fifth, I think people should go dark on social media every now and then. I mean, I know I do. If even though, you know, I do this stuff for my uh, career and my job, if I'm not feeling well, if I'm feeling burnt out, if I'm feeling uninspired, I just take the time off. It is okay not to post. It is okay not to scroll. It's actually really healthy for you to do that. I think a lot of times we get fatigued and burnt out because we're constantly being stimulated and we're also constantly comparing. And I think when you kind of compare all the time or you're on all the time or you're posting all the time, you're just continuously depleting, depleting, depleting yourself. So go darker on social media, take a week off, take a month off, take a couple of weeks, like whatever it is, take some time and step away. Instagram and YouTube and Facebook will be there. TikTok too. <laughs> take some time to go dark. Take that time to reconnect to yourself, to reevaluate what is meaningful in your life, to reevaluate what your goals and dreams are, to reevaluate what fulfills you, and then to reestablish those healthy boundaries in your life so you're not oversharing, over depleting, and overextending yourself. And give yourself permission to stop. Give yourself permission to take a break. Give yourself your permission to pivot because usually again when you're burnout it's 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 trying to say that something in your life is no longer fulfilling you and it's probably time to reevaluate who and what is in your life and what you're doing with your life and maybe it's time to pivot that's why you take that time to stop that's why you take that time to take a break You use that time and stillness to identify the source of your burnout. Once you identify that source of your, of your burnout, you then want to reconnect to yourself and to others. Cause once you reconnect to yourself and and the others, then you have the more awareness to how you're going to deal with that source. So now that I'm reconnected to my purpose and my passion and my intuition and my inspiration, maybe that means I need to find a different job. Maybe that means I need to break up with this person. Maybe that means I need to take a break from these friends. Maybe that means I need a little bit more of alone time. Or maybe it could mean it's time for me to put myself out there and find uh, a partner. Maybe it means, oh, I want to go for a, a promotion at my job. You know, maybe it means, oh, I need to reach out to my friends for more support. 
So burnout doesn't always mean that you need to let things go. Sometimes it means you need to lean in more. But you need to take that time and that space to reconnect and identify in order to know. And then once you reevaluate and you've identified, then you need to reestablish healthy boundaries in your life. Get really comfortable with the word no. No, I cannot do that. No, thank you. Yes, you can expect this. No, you cannot expect it. Full sentences. Get really clear on your boundaries. Make your well-being your first and best priority. Take care of yourself first. Full your cup up first. And that's how you deal with burnout. And that's how you get over it. And then the next time when you see yourself falling back into burnout, you'll be able to quickly identify it. And hopefully you won't get to that burnout stage because you'll have a self-care plan in place. You've learned now, I need to take breaks. I need to have healthy boundaries. I need to take care of myself holistically, mind, body, and spirit. I need to put my needs and wants first. I need to be okay with pivoting. I need to be okay with taking time off. I need to be okay with saying no. So you have those self-care practices in place that should be able to prevent burnout, but life happens. So then if you find yourself getting burned out again, you now have the tools to get out of it. Or you now have the tools to say, well, what is this burnout trying to show me? What is this burnout trying to show me in my life that's no longer serving me? And now I have the tools to identify it and to get out of it and to reestablish boundaries and to pivot. So there you have it. Those are my five ways to deal with burnout. If you had any aha moments, if you identified with anything that we talked about in the session, I know I have personally, then be sure to join me over on Instagram at Candy Washington. Give me a follow and a DM and tag me with any of your aha moments and I will be sure to show you some love back. Always check out the show notes and the description box where you can get some freebies and see what else we have going on and also join our community. We have a lot of great things going on as well. So until next time, take care of yourself and each other and be well. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care. Where your host, writer, actor, and producer Candy Washington helps you live a more joyful life with a cheeky dash of pop culture news. Be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and join the conversation on Instagram at Candy Washington. Let's go.